Hey everybody, it's Rolt with you, and welcome to a new series on my channel. It is going to be inside of the game, Silent Hunter 5. I know this game was beat to death when it first came out, but the guys over at subsim.com, I've, I've been a member of that for a while, uh, really came together as a team and have put together a mod pack called the Wolves of Steel, uh, using also the Open Horizons 2 mod if you go over there and check it out on the website i'll have a link to the website uh in the description below but anyway we're gonna get right into it so this video doesn't get too long so with that said this this game takes forever to play uh it is pretty much a one-on-time literal you know it takes hours of of recording video to get anything worth showing on screen but i wanted to give you guys an introduction to the series that i've got planned now with that being said this may be a once a month maybe bi-weekly series let me know what you think about this video, and I may try to push it forward a little bit. I may try to get rid of something else, but this, I wanted to show it to you guys and, and see what's going on. So, we should be going here in a second. Or not. That's the problem with modded games as well, is it... Uh, the the loading screen is brutal because it's got to get all these assets from all these different places and plug them in where they need to go to make it happen and those of you that play lspdfr you know what i'm talking about because the more mods you have the more plugins you have the longer it takes each of them to to crank up and get going when you first start the game up and then when you go on duty it's just it forever once you hit force duty so what I may do is I'm going to cut away and I'll come back in when we get into the into the sub pen. So I'll see you guys in a second. Sure thing. What do you have in mind? All right, guys, here we are. We are in the sub pen. We're looking at our boat. It's sitting there. All these guys around here are working. Now, one of the things that this mod actually throws in is it actually puts the German flag from the World War II era into the game uh, because the game developers, I guess, because of, you know, wanting to be apolitical or whatever, they they didn't have the the German flags. They didn't have swastikas or anything like that showing in the game. But... As it stands, we could run up and down this pier, try to talk to people. The only guy here that's going to tell us much of anything is right here. Uh, so, let's, without further ado, talk to him. Now, it is going to bring up a map for a second with kind of a, a starting orders scenario, but it's a, it's a mod. So, the starting orders are a little bit off. It's actually the starting orders for the second mission, if I'm not mistaken. I've only played this game maybe three or four hours so far, but I was so intrigued with it that I wanted to show it to you guys. It's just taken me a long time to get it to the channel. So without further ado, we're going to talk to him. And come what in, are my mission in. orders? We're going to skip what he's saying. And we're down here in Memel Harbor. This is where our boat is down in these sub pens. Uh, we're actually in this sub pen here, but we are going to go do Baltic operations. So we've got to come out of the harbor over here and then come all the way down over to here and soften up the shipping lanes coming into Poland pre uh, World War One or World War Two even. So uh, basically. We're going to get into that area, but this is just an introductory kind of series start, I guess, a pilot episode to see what you guys think, see what you like, and we're going to go ahead and request that mission. We're going to get out of this, and we're going to ask him back, that we need to start our patrol. So, the only successful torpedo dogfight ever recorded 
ever recorded occurred in World War II was between the HMS Ventura and the U-864 in the North Sea, west of Bergen, Norway. The U-boat was finally sunk by a spread of four torpedoes at 17-second intervals. Wow, that went away quick. But... Returning to the machine. Three, eight. Yes. I'll stop. We don't need to have our attack periscope up. We're here. We've got our officers and, and on stuff both diesels. on Making the one, uh, four knots in this weather. But anyway, we can talk to these guys. I may do that in the next episode as we're underway. Uh, kind of want to give you a tour of the boat so far. So right here, we've got our observation periscope, which uh, the the mods to the game actually, when you look at the attack periscope, bearing seven zero. These are all the controls that you have to know and how to set them and everything else uh, to, man, it's it's a complicated deal. And those Escort controls sighted, are all right there. So you'd actually relay to somebody else standing here what you wanted as the captain. So with that said, that's our observation deck. And we're going to go down into the belly of the ship. As you can see, uh, the it's modeled fantastically. Uh, it's, from what I understand, the submarines from World War II, uh, very real. I mean, these guys were small uh, and not super, super, you know, roomy, or the food was bad. It stunk of diesel fuel and smoke all the time. It was horrible. So, oh, this was the stern of the ship. And now, this is something, there's the engines, right? So, that exhaust and the oil from the diesels and, and everything else has got to go somewhere. And right here's the kitchen. And that guy's kind of scary. But, anyhow, there's some living quarters for our, our sailors. We're going to come back up here, get past our first officer here. Excuse me, buddy. Our, our navigator. There's the officer of the deck. There's our bed. That's the captain's quarters on the ship. It's, wow. Uh, absolutely brutal. Right next to the radio operator and the, uh, it's not even sonar, it's a hydrophone at this point in the war. So, there's some more officer bunks uh, right here. Uh, sailor bunks and such. And here's our four torpedo room with our four torpedo bay or torpedo bays uh, torpedo tubes there's our web officer so now's the time where i get to show you guys a little bit about the mod i've got going on we're going to go ahead and climb back up the ladder guys everything's doing great and we'll we'll get underway here in just a second so we're going to climb up the ladder here and we're going to call down on ye olde speaker here that we want our pilot or our harbor pilot to come on board and take care of stuff. So harbor pilot, we're in Memel Harbor. Like I said, we're going to actually go ahead and load this up and we're going to tell him to get underway. So like I said, this is what's really, Slow really, speed ahead. really, really fantastic about this mod is this guy without me having to make course corrections and everything else. And this really how it's, it happens in the real world, even to this day. Uh, you've got a harbor master that knows the harbor, that knows where he can put a boat safely and get it out to sea and then give it to the captain. Uh, it's almost akin to the old steamships on the Mississippi River. Uh, they only traveled a short distance, but that short distance that they traveled, that New steamboat course, captain, two, two, two degrees. That that steamboat captain knew that area of water, that area of the river, better than anybody else on the planet. So, it's just fantastic. Now, again, I can pull up some binoculars, and that's part of the mod. That right there is that's not in the Ship game otherwise. Bearing, six, three. New now, these guys, two, two, three degrees. These guys are going to be going all out 
telling me stuff. Uh, whole nine yards. So there's another German ship. It looks like a. I can't see it under his armpit. Ship sighted, bearing six but nine. It's absolutely amazing uh, the level of detail and the the maneuverability that you actually get in this game. So, while the harbor pilot's you know doing his thing, we're gonna go new ahead course, and two two five degrees. Current speed seven knots. New course two nine nine degrees. We're gonna look around here. There's deck gun. I mean submarines today don't even have that anymore and then there's our our anti-aircraft gun uh it's aircraft were a big deal to subs man so come on let's get back up on the conning tower how do even models the yuzo ship sighted bearing so we can click seven, on the yuzo one. here which is basically uh when you're above above the water and say it was night and you're gonna be you know doing a torpedo attack uh while you're uh i guess you could call it while you're you know less visible but uh easier to move around you you move around faster over the water on top of the water than you do under the water uh even today Ship sighted bearing three nine and these guys are going to be annoying as uh new course three two zero degrees uh, but this is this is how i play the game it is literally i play it in a one-to-one -one time uh, it's really the best way to do a sim i mean to tell you the truth i even flight simming when i was flight simming all the time uh we we did flight sim by you know by one to one time that was kind of a requirement in the groups that i was part of so another thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here and do automation we're going to get our navigator we want to get we want it is local time new course three two six degrees between four and eight ship sighted bearing two two so, now it's 04, so we need to 16 to 20 hundred. But we're going to get that going too. And we're going to tell him that we want position Ship reports sighted, bearing as two, we go three. along. So, we've got our crew doing their thing. We can actually go around here and actually I want to look at... Um, we haven't got any radio messages and that's another thing I've got in this game I've actually got to pull up uh, a ship sighted bearing three eight oh like I said these guys are gonna get annoying new but... course three three one degrees new course three two four degrees I I've got it set to where when I get a message from BDU that I've got to use an enigma uh, I've got to understand how to use an enigma and decode the message and get everything going so right now there's me that's 74 percent i've got uh joseph erdman if i click on him it'll actually give you a little bit of a backstory but right now what i'm going to do we may do that as we're underway in the next episode what i am going to do is i'm going to see what abilities i can upgrade on what people and get them going to to where they're a little more efficient that way if we do run into anything then uh we're a little bit better prepared and let's see torpedo new course three two three degrees he can't really Escort do much sighted. anything bearing one three three eh nothing there either wow uh the cook ah we can upgrade our cook new course three two two degrees so we've upgraded our cook this guy really can't do much of anything sonar guy yep not much there 
radios. Can't do anything there either. Beans. Alrighty, well, there it is, guys. Uh, I like I said, it's ship sighted bearing one five four. A lot of this, you know, being written in German. Eh, don't get it. Uh, don't speak German. Don't read German. Don't write German. None of that. But uh, it's a German boat, so it's, uh, it reminds me of the movie that. Uh, what was it? Uh, Bill Paxson and. Uh, New course. Three, two, one degrees. Matt, Matthew course, McConaughey. Three, one, five degrees. About the U.S. boat that got the Enigma block, that was completely unrealistic, not not historically accurate at all, but it's a really really good story. Uh, what you U five seventy one was the Ship name of that movie. Bearing one six four. But where you know these guys get on a German boat and they're like, eh, what's this stuff say? You know. And the situations there, it was just horrible, horrible, horrible. But anyway, guys, I'm going to step away from my microphone, or, or microphone and you guys for a second. I'm going to take some good pictures of the boat and put together a montage. And I'll see you when we get out of the harbor. Minimum speed ahead. Slow speed ahead. Half speed ahead. Right, guys i was down below decks talking to some people and what it is is the harbor pilot gets kind of confused every once in a while when you get close to other ships 
because it it knows they're there, but it doesn't know what they're doing. So we're gonna go ahead. Half and speed ahead. Get back up to a decent speed. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the montage. We should be getting close to uh, where the harbor pilot is actually going to relinquish. One. Nuts. No, 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 no. Half speed ahead. I said forward. Anyway, what we're going to do is sit here for a second. The harbor pilot should get, basically stop the boat here in a second. And that's when we're going to take our first celestial fix and figure out exactly where we are, plot where we're going to go, and point the boat that direction and take off. Now, with that said, I want to reiterate, this is not going to be a weekly series. This is not going to be a promised bi-weekly series. It all depends on what you guys want. Uh, if you don't like it, if it's too boring or whatever, it, it, I completely, completely understand what's going on, that this is not the most exciting thing in the world, but I enjoy playing it, so I'm going to continue five. to play it. Nuts. Now, see, they're getting, he's getting confused by those boats over there, I bet you. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you. Yep. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do because we're pretty close to those fellows. New course, two, three, five degrees. Alrighty, we should be making our final turn out of the harbor. Uh, and this is the point where, you know, uh, a small craft would come get him. And he's going to relinquish the boat to us. Once, once the harbor pilot says that he's off the boat, I'm going to ask for an all stop. I'm going to get my navigator to give me a position fix. Uh, he's already given me a couple. He looks like he's pretty close there. So I want to move the map a little bit where I can see a little bit better. And that's a dead reckoning fix. And what that is, is okay, nav point one was a celestial fix. Nav point two was a basically a dead reckoning fix. Basically, the guy says, okay, this is, this is the speed we were going. This is the turns we made. This is, should be where we are. It's not accurate uh, very well. Uh, even the celestial fixes are thrown off in this game big time so let's go ahead and yeah see new course two three one degrees current speed six knots yep go ahead and try to Slow speed, speed him speed up ahead. a little bit But, like I said, this is, I enjoy this game uh, just because uh, the realism. It, it's amazingly real, especially when, in, when you get into the combat and the things. Um, not only is it that it's hard to get a torpedo fix on a ship without everything being just so-so, but if you get seen or if you miss or whatever else, they call the cavalry and they will come bomb you into oblivion. Uh, it's just nasty. So anyhow, I'm going to cut away again, guys, and uh, I'll see you when the harbor pilot's off and uh, we get a fix and get out under underway. Uh, get out into some open water to where we can actually do some dive tests and stuff like that. Uh, trying to play by the rules and, and uh, what I call the rules of simulation. You do things like they do in the real world. And 
I, granted, I was never you in the Navy. Two, two, nine degrees. I was never on a submarine other than I took a tour of one when I lived in Seattle. Um, it was not a German World War II era boat. It was a, a Russian sub. Uh, and even that was uh, pretty pretty sparse when it came to living arrangements. So, anyway, I'll see you guys in a second, and we'll continue on from where we're at. All right, guys, the harbor pilot has left our boat. Uh, we are out to sea, and now we're going to ask our navigator, this fella right here, tell him we need a position fix. Where are we? So, what we want to do... No, no, no. Reports. We want a celestial fix as to where we are. So. Right away. Okay. Now, with that being said, he's doing... Excuse me, he's doing that. The weather is improving. Uh, good for the weather. Anyhow, we're going to get away. our depth under keel, and it should tell us we're in shallow waters. Depth under keel is 20 meters, Captain. Alrighty, so that's not a whole lot. Now, here's the thing about the Celestial Fix. It is... Um, it's it takes forever because he's basically got to come up and everything's done in real time so i just want to show you guys what i'm doing while i'm getting this underway so we're basically stopped we're doing three knots we're drifting so when the navigator figures out where we're at and i verify it with what i think where we're at as far as looking at the map Looking at the map, we should be somewhere in this area here as a greater scope of things. Now, if he puts me over here in the land or something like that, I'm going to keep doing celestial fixes until he figures out specifically where we are. And I concur with it. And then we're going to get underway. So, we'll see you guys in a second. Alright guys, we have our fix right here. Celestial fix... And, okay, we're a little bit further out than I thought we were, but let's go ahead and move the map and see. We're going to go ahead and check our orders and see what's going on. We'll actually read the orders here in a second uh, when it basically, uh, when we get underway, probably going to be the next episode because this one, I have a feeling, is going to be a little long. So what we want to do is we want to get out into open water probably in here i think this area is a little deeper than say the coastal area it makes more sense gives me the opportunity in the next episode to do a dive test and stuff like that make sure everything works right and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull out our protractor and we're going to set a course out this way and basically we're setting a course out to eh, 90 degrees ish from our location which means we want to go west and and so what that is is let's go ahead and put that out here like so 90 degrees from our current position which means that we want to go due west actually this this is the protractor we want so what we want to do is we want to get out this way about 260 kilometers due west that works for me give or take so we want to go due west so there it is we'll go ahead and mark that there and what we're going to do now that we know we want to go due west so 270 degrees and we want to go at a decent speed. We'll be able to stay on top for a little while because it is coming into evening. Once we get out probably uh, into this grid right here is where we're going to uh, 
do our dive test and such. So with that said, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back above the ship and I'm going to tell them that I want to go to... Two seventy and two seventy one. Desired course. New course two seven one degrees. New course two seven one degrees. And we're gonna get underway. Oh, ahead. And with that said, guys, we're gonna get out of here and we'll see you next time. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and bye now.